Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Verdi's Rigoletto with conductor Michele Gamba, which I saw last night at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. This marked the fourth time I saw this particular production of Rigoletto because Attilio Glazer was making his role debut as the Duke of Mantua. So let's not waste any time and talk about his performance right now. It should come off as no surprise that I have been following Mr. Glazer's career for about five to six years. I have seen him grow from being a purely lyric tenor to a lyric tenor who is on the verge of doing more spinto tenor roles like Ismaele from Nabucco. And his performance last night confirms my opinion of his ever growing and blossoming career. It was a very phenomenal experience to see Attilio Glazer embody the Duke, helped with his constantly maturing lyric tenor voice, which has developed in depth, steeliness, and so much body found in that voice. It's a lot more masculine sounding than to be expected from any typical lyric tenor. And it has that type of virility which I love and totally enjoy. It also helped that he was able to embody the Duke with everything that makes him charming, yet kind of despicable as well. He was able to embody his swagger, his machismo, his devilish charm, and everything about the Duke that makes him such a love-to-hate type of character. His arias were well sung, and his voice had that focus and that cleanliness while maintaining that richness that he has been always well known for. Sure, he is no super high singer like Alfredo Kraus or Luciano Pavarotti or even what we have today with the likes of Teso Albello and Javier Camarena, especially considering the fact that I always look forward to any tenor who sings Posente Amore Mi Chiama to sing that high D. But I digress. I still have to give a lot of kudos to Attilio Glazer for embodying this role and for doing such a phenomenal job portraying the Duke in all of his swagger and in all of his malicious glory. So bravo to you, Attilio Glazer, for a wonderfully successful role debut as this iconic villain. Returning as Rigoletto was the exceptional and awesome Herr Marcus Brück. And I definitely have to give this gentleman so much credit for how he was able to embody Rigoletto. He was able to embody Rigoletto's angst, anguish, anxiety, and overall visceral nature that he was able to make a performance that is completely naked and completely thrilling to watch. He was able to use that emotional rawness found not only in his voice, but also in his mannerisms. Sure, sometimes the tones he produced were not really that beautiful, but what Marcus Brück managed to do as Rigoletto was create a raw, visceral, animalistic portrayal of this iconic court jester who is fueled with vengeance, fueled with anger, anxiety, and everything about Rigoletto which makes him all the more relatable and all the more sympathetic as a character. What makes Marcus Brück raw and visceral as a performer is not only his capabilities of digging into this character and everything that makes him all the more lifelike, but he was able to use Sprechgesang in certain passages. Sure, there were times he screamed his lines instead of singing it, but this was also, to his credit, done to a theatrical effect to show that there are sides to Rigoletto which are not all that pleasant, but nonetheless a lot more relatable than one can give it credit for. So when all is said and done, I have to give a lot of credit to Marcus Brück for embodying this iconic court jester with his raw animalistic power 
and his emotional drive, thus making him a fully fleshed out character. Even though there were times he screamed his lines, they were nonetheless used to dramatic effect to bring out the inner angst, anguish, and anxieties this particular character feels throughout the opera. Elena Tsaragova returns as Gilda, and her voice, compared to five years ago when she performed this role, grew in richness, beauty, fullness, and articulation, and of course, accuracy. Her high E flat in Si Vendetta was a lot more accurate and to the point than how she attacked the note five years ago. In fact, it sounded a lot richer and fuller. And that's the same thing I can say about her voice in general. Sure, it does maintain that light, breezy, and lyrical quality that Miss Salagova has always been well known for, but it managed to continue to blossom in every role she does, especially when it comes to roles like Gilda. She managed to continue to embody Gilda with her signature girlishness, but also back it up into making Gilda's metamorphosis into a self-sacrificing young woman all the more realized. With that said, I have to give Elena Talagova high praise for not only her technical prowess in performing Gilda, but also her overall dedication as a singing actress and everything she accomplished as a fine, light lyric soprano with great high notes. And let's not forget about her superb rendition of Caro Nome, which she continued to use that ever-blossoming and ever-lovely voice to her greatest advantage. Tobias Kiras strikes again as the assassin Sparafucile, and as always, he managed to use his focused, dark, round and rich basso profondo voice to the greatest of his abilities. He was able to make this character threatening in a way that makes one's hair stand on end. And for that, he deserves the highest amount of kudos for making this character come to life in his own unique way. Samuel Dill Johnson was an adequate Monterone, and while I thought he managed to sing and act this role well, I thought his voice wasn't entirely suitable for a part like this. Mr. Johnson is essentially more of a cavalier baritone who can specialize in roles like Guglielmo from Cosi Fan Tutte, Papageno from Zauberflöte, and maybe even Donner from Das Rheingold, The Herald, from Lohengrin, Wolfram, from Tannhäuser, and maybe in five to ten years' time, Amfortas from Parsifal. I thought that vocally, he didn't really fit the role of Count Monterone because there were times I felt like his deeper notes were lacking, and I felt like his overall timbre, even though he tried his very best, while it grew, in richness and in volume didn't really suit this particular character because I would always see this role as more of a basso cantante or a bass baritone part. My personal favorite Monterones have to be Fernando Corena, Plinio Clabassi, Giorgio Giuseppini, and of course Samuel Raimi who even recorded both Sparfucile and Monterone alongside Cheryl Mills, Beverly Sills, and Alfredo Kraus. Even though I thought that Monterone was slightly heavy for Samuel Dale Johnson, I still have to give him credit for one thing. He was nonetheless a very dedicated, passionate, driven, diligent, and absolutely focused singing actor. He was able to compensate whatever was lacking in his performance vocally as Monterone and basically throw himself in despite all of the circumstances. At the end of the day, what we have here is a brave, 
courageous, and determined singing actor who threw himself into the role really well, even though he may not have had the voice to 100% fit the character. But I digress. I still have to give Samuel Dale Johnson so much credit for how he was able to throw himself into this character. He was effective as a singing actor that I still have to salute him for his efforts. Mayu Watulwoto was absolutely sumptuous in the dual roles of Giovanna the nurse and Madalena, Sparacuchile's sister. As Giovanna, she was able to make her sultry and absolutely snarky as a sort of big sister figure to Gilda, and her voice suited that well. As Madalena, she was able to make her not only sultry, but also sumptuous and seductive as a femme fatale. Her voice managed to bring so much life to these two characters. With Giovanna, she was able to give her a sort of big sister-like tone. But with Madalena, she was able to make her fuller and richer in expression. Sure, some of her chest notes were still kind of hollow, but she's still rather young. She still has a lot of time to grow, and for that, I will continue to root for Miss Batuluoto and her ever-blossoming career, as it seems to be the right way forward for her. So here's hoping that Miss Batuluoto will continue to grow as a fine singing actress and an equally fine mezzo contralto who is on the cusp of international fame. We also had such brilliant singing found in Byungil Kim's hunky, handsome, and dashing Conte Ceprano, Thomas Lehmann's dashing, noble, yet slimy Marulo, Paul Kaufmann's characterful Borsa, Cornelia Kim's light and breezy Contessa di Ceprano, Brian Murray's virile usher, and Amber Fascal's gorgeously sung Lady of the Court. So overall, the singing was absolutely great from everyone, especially Attilio Glazer as the Duke. He certainly made a successful role debut last night as he was able to embody the Duke with so much nuance, but also back it up with the swagger that is found in his ever-growing full lyric tenor voice. And the conducting done by Michele Gamba was ideally brisk, especially in Adio Adio, and of course, my favorite moment, Si Vendetta. He managed to get some nuances out of the orchestra so superbly, especially in that revenge duet between Rigoletto and Gilda, where he managed to pull all of the stops, and especially the storm sequence involving Sparcuchile, Madalena, and Gilda. And let's not forget about the ever wonderful works that the chorus and the orchestra of the Deutsche Oper Berlin continue to do. So overall, Attilio Glaza's role debut as the Duke of Mantua was a success, especially when he's backed up by such equally great singing actors like Marcus Brück, Elena Zalagova, Samuel Dale Johnson, Tobias Kira, Mayu Vatulwoto, Thomas Lehmann, Byungil Kim, Paul Kaufman, Cornelia Kim, Brian Murray, and Amber Fascal. Everyone deserved the hugest amount of kudos I can ever give to them because they are and will always will be professionals in their craft. And for those of you who watched this particular performance of Rigoletto last night at the Deutsche Oper Berlin, what'd you think of it? Did you feel like Attilio Glazar was successful in his role debut as the Duke of Mantua? Was there another singer who outshone him? Or did you feel like there was someone who stuck out like a sore thumb? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in for my review of Rossini's Il Barbiere di Siviglia, starring Michele Angelini as Alma Viva at the Staatsoper Unten den Linden. So until then, have a great day, everybody!